What's up guys, it's Space Lord from DataVids, and today I'm going to talk to you about unit tests. We're going to build an MS test unit test, connect it to a project, assert the results, make sure it worked, show you how long it took, how to find it in Visual Studio, all that great stuff. It's kind of a simple video, it'll be really easy for you to follow along, a lot simpler than most of the other videos I put out there, but it's just as important, so watch it to the end. I promise you it's worth your time, and thanks for watching. Talk to you later. So first, you're going to have to have a project in order to test. You can't just create a unit test project and that's it. The unit test project has to be in a solution with another project that you're actually going to test. So in this case, I have a simple console app, but in your case, you might have a web application, an API application, or something else. Okay. So in this case, I've got a couple of static methods. One returns a number, one that throws an exception. Let's go ahead and create the unit test project by right-clicking on the solution add new project and go up here where it says search for templates on the top and just type test okay so you'll notice there's a few different choices ms test and unit test and x unit and then there's a couple others in this example we're going to be using ms test so i'm going to click on ms test and hit next okay a couple of things to note right off the bat is it's already set up a couple of attributes, test class and test method. If you wait a second, it'll clarify the references for you, but you do have to add a reference to the, the project that you're going to test in the dependencies of your test project. So right click on your project and do add uh, project reference and check the project that you want to test. Hit OK. Now we can test these methods over here in program.cs. Let's go ahead and build our first test to test the getNumber method, and we'll validate that if it returns a number greater than three, which of course is gonna return five, then it will be successful. Less than three, then we'll say the test failed. Try to make a real world example out of it, maybe a little bit tough, but you know, you'll be able to do a test for whatever your business case may be. So jumping over here to the unit test, the class is called program. But if I hit program dot and then I do my control dot on that, you'll notice it didn't come up as an option. And that's because program is not um, a public class. So let's make it a public class, save that. So if you're doing a console application by default, it just says class program, just change that to public. So now come back over here and do your control dot. And as you can see, because you've added the reference and because you made it public, you could choose using console app one, okay? So all your static methods should show up here. Um, anything that you need an instance, of course, will not show up doing program dot. You'd have to do new, the new keyword. Um, so let's go ahead and let's do get number. And it doesn't take any parameters. And let's put that into a result. Let's say an integer result equals that. Now what we do in test methods is we use the word assert. And if you do assert dot, you could look at all of these choices. We could say assert that it is equal. So we could say assert that result is equal to five. We could, uh, we could do another one that we could say that it's not equal or that it's false, null, et cetera. So those are all the type of ways that you could unit test and you could put multiple asserts in a method. Let's do this real quick. So let's say that assert is true result greater than three. And then after that, let's do assert that it's greater than four, and then we'll do that assert that it's greater than five, which it's not, right? Just to show you how that works. The next thing we're gonna do is put a breakpoint right there. Um, but if you just go ahead and um, uh, run the test here, it's not gonna hit that breakpoint. You have to do debug tests. Now there is a window that should pop up if it doesn't, you got to find it up here in your menus at the top of at the top of uh, Visual Studio up here, um, but it showed up for me, and that's a good thing. Hit my breakpoint, so I'm gonna hit F10. Assert that it's true. It is greater than three. It is greater than four. It's not greater than five. This failed. Okay. It only popped up like this because we're in debug mode. But whether in debug mode or just running your unit tests, the cool thing is, is that it's gonna show up here and tell you which test failed and which test passed. So 
why don't we go ahead and take that out and run it again. And now that I've got my test explorer open, I could actually, and oh, by the way, it shows you over here information about what failed when you click on that particular test. Let's save your whole list there. So I could rerun it here or re-debug it, I should say. And it's greater than three, it's greater than four. We've removed that last line and now it's a green check mark. It was true. It shows you how long it took. This is another great tool. If you have 50 methods, they're all in here and they all have to take a certain amount of time. This is another tool that you could do to say all my inputs and outputs from the database, for example, still take this amount of time after we made these configuration changes to the database or after we made these code changes or these config changes or we published to a new server, et cetera, et cetera. These things, so many uses for unit tests that are just kind of mm, not used enough in my opinion. I want to talk about a couple of quick things that are important that we skipped over we probably should have talked about at the start. And that is that unit tests should be void and they should not take any parameters in the method itself. Kind of maybe seems obvious, you know how you've seen what the unit test does, but it's but that is that is part of being a unit test. Void and don't take any parameters. Uh, there may be some exceptions to that. Another thing is if you throw an exception anywhere in here that you didn't intend to do, let's say you call uh, a couple of library calls and one of those fails, or for whatever reason you get an exception, it's going to it's going to uh, assert false, or it's going to it's going to fail the unit test. It's going to show up as failed in that uh, red check mark there instead of the green. Talk a bit more of that about that folder structure. So go to test, test explorer if it's hidden away from you, and take a look at this. It's going to be obvious to you probably, but look, unit test project one. That's the name of your project, see? And then underneath that unit test project one, that's the name of your namespace here. Unit test one, that's the name of your class. Test method one, that's the name of your method. So if you have a whole bunch of methods in this class, they'll be at this level right here, what you're seeing. Um, go one level up, and those will be those within the namespace. So obviously, in a bigger project, you could have hundreds of unit tests, especially if it's test-driven development. Test-driven development means you're creating a bunch of tests to do functionality that doesn't exist yet, so you should expect them all to fail. Then you build the functionality, the absolute minimum functionality to make those tests pass. You rerun the tests, and boom, they work, right? So that's test-driven development. Uh, it's pretty popular in some shops. Other shops, it just doesn't make sense to do it, or the, pro the, or the product is too established and so they just create unit tests for, you know, some things. Another quick thing to show you guys, and you might want to just copy this exactly the way I have it written into your project, is class initialize as the attribute and then have a public static void class initialize and take in a test context parameter and then whatever variable name that you want, um, just like that. And basically this is what you could do to have some data set that applies to all of the test methods within your class. So for instance, um, I'll just debug this real quick um, to get to my breakpoint. If I hover over test helper, we've got this global variable initialized, which are, you could set that to a number, uh, you know, a, an API result, whatever it is that you need. And then that's how you also would create your mock data objects if you wanted to have a bunch of the same data but run a bunch of different tests on it. And I think I promised in one of my previous videos that I would talk to you whenever I thought of one of those gotchas or things that I've encountered in my career that really just stuck out as, wow, this could take a lot of time if I had to learn this over. Well, one of those is sometimes you go and you run your unit test project and for whatever reason, it just says, did not run the test. So say so I right click the project and I go run tests here and instead of being green like this, being success, or red, being failed, it just shows blue and says, did not run the test. And you're like, well, why didn't you run the test? I told you to run the test. If that happens to you, just go to your, um, go to your project here and make sure that you've picked um, the right uh, CPU, like any CPU 32 or X64 that matches the project that you're testing. Because if that gets switched out, and sometimes it's not even you, it's just you created the unit test project and by default it picked any CPU and, it, and your project set to x64, it'll just do that. So that's one of those gotchas. Let's keep going. Lots more information to share.
you'll often see, um, if you want to see kind of how the how it's technically written, the test is typically you'll see um, arrange, act, and assert. So basically, arrange just means you know set up the data. Maybe you have some prerequisites, some parameters that need to be set up, or some data that needs to be mocked, or you know maybe you have some interfaces that you inject into your application and you need to implement those interfaces. You get get your data ready. That's arrange. Um, act would be to call the method that you're trying to test, for instance, get number here, and then assert, which is determine whether it ran correctly, whether the re results it produced are accurate. So arrange, act, and assert. If you, if you ever hear those terms, that's what it means, but I wouldn't think about it too much. You're really just doing a unit test, right? Let's see if the thing works. And then the last thing is a lot of you guys out there are doing web API and MVC applications. If you want to test those, take a look at the third-party library Mock. It's M-O-Q. It's, it's a third-party library out there and just helps you to implement the interfaces that you need to get the data to, uh, that would normally be injected into those controllers and then how to call those controllers and get the results. But it looks very similar to this and you'll still use a cert after you're done and you're still going to be calling a method. It's just that the method you're calling is a controller. Well, I hope this simple introduction to unit tests was helpful to you and have a good day. Bye for now.